you can put in an existing wind, in an existing pylon that transports electricity inside, you can make vertical wind turbines. Sounds simple, right? How come we didn't do it? In France, with only 50, sorry, in France, with only one third of the existing pilots, you can eliminate two nuclear power stations. Only using. It can be implemented within one year, and the cost is less than one euro cent per kilowatt hour. Did you know that solar, solar panels work on both sides? No, how come we didn't use both sides? I mean, I'm happy to have Hugo, who is a physicist in solid state physics, so he knows optics as well. Simply using optics. Now, the industry is using that wonderful sunlight, which is a comet, and it is today using mirrors with laser and, and very complex mechanics to shine it all to the tower. And they say this is renewable energy. But if you use optics, the optics, which is the physics, basis of the physics of the Earth, it's a comet. It's predictable. You use this film and you can project everything underneath your solar panel. Four and a half times more energy, three times less material, all using recycled materials. Cost less than one euro cent per kilowatt hour. We have a portfolio of more than a hundred of these innovations, and these innovations are not complex. All these innovations are inspired by the way natural systems function. Our greatest comments are the natural systems. They're there. They make our air for free, they recycle our water for free, they generate topsoil again. All of that for free. And if we can inspire ourselves on how these different systems actually work, we have in our portfolio more than 30 technologies. But in Japan and in Germany, we only present three. Because these three work with what we have. The principle of the commons is that you work with what you have. I mean, this is a very simple one, but unfortunately we don't do it. Our present economic system works with what it does not have. And if you operate with what you don't have, then you're drawing on your comments until there's nothing left. And so, turning the principles around allow us to see how we can redefine sustainability. Sustainability has the capacity to respond to everyone's needs with what you have. And if we respond to everyone's needs with what we have, we have to rethink the way we do it. For example, we use batteries. These cameras use a battery. Your cell phone uses a battery. Your translating headphone equipment uses a battery. In natural systems, there are no batteries. We're the only species that is so stupid to get metals out of the earth pull them together chemically with an awful lot of heat in order to store electricity. If we use 40 billion batteries a year, we're destroying our commons. Because we're putting into our commons all the waste batteries. You know that less than 20% of the batteries are recycled worldwide. Less than 20%. That means 30 billion batteries enter our water and our soil and even into our air. Our commons are gone. And then of course the solution of this economic system we have today is that you must pay to clean it up. That's what taxes are used for. Taxes are used.
to actually perpetuate the destruction of the commons. Think about it. If we decide that we're having no more batteries, no more batteries, not even your cell phone, not even your headphone, no more, finito, and it's end, forever, no more, you will kick in such a creative process of finding solutions. Let's take this, let's take this microphone. It has batteries. Hugo, next year, I'll come back when you have microphones without batteries. How many batteries are used during Telefutura? Ah! Too many. You know that my voice, I know I speak very loud, but my voice has pressure. That pressure can be converted to electricity right in my microphone. And my hand is warm. And by holding this with three degrees Celsius difference, this is a commons. This is available for free. My voice is for free. And my temperature for my hand is for free. I can make this work all the time. No batteries. In natural systems, the main storage for energy is actually water. Everything needs water. Even our cells where our ATP is stored, everything needs water. Water is one of the most generous commons that exists. How much energy do we store in water? None. We don't do it. When you are at home and you have an electric heater to heat up your water, that water has the capacity to store so much energy it can power your house. But what do we do? We, even Greens, we committed people to the environment. The first thing we do is we take the shower and we mix our hot water with cold water. What? What? Why don't you just make 38 degree water? Or, if you want to go to 90 degrees, then when the water comes out, take the electricity out. That's how natural systems... We have to think of the commons beyond what we know of the commons. It's not just the water. It's not just the air. It's not just the topsoil. It's the integrated system that's right before us that is capable of responding to the needs of all. Our economic system has only one thing that is sustainable. Poverty. Poverty is sustained perfectly in our economic system. Nothing else we do is sustainable. Because we haven't yet understood how the commons go beyond being there. And we have to move to the commons who are the flows of life. And if we can harness the flows of life, we can very quickly redesign how our production and consumption system works. A system that should not preserve the commons, a system that should help regenerate the commons. We need to regenerate the commons. Any of you here knows our project in Colombia called Las Gaviotas? Six years ago, Paolo Lugari and a team 
which was very privileged to be part of, said we are going to regenerate the forest. We don't regenerate the forest to have the trees. We want to regenerate the forest because we want to have an ecosystem that provides all the basic things we need for free, forever. Now what more can there be that's for free and forever? 26 years later, we have regenerated 8,000 hectares of rainforests that supplies all the water, all the food, all the energy that the local population needs to get. When you have land that generates nothing but problems, including violence amongst people, because there is such a shortage of everything, then that land is worthless. If you have land that generates water, food, self-regenerated stocksoil, then you have peace. When you succeed in living in a land of peace, then you can really grow the commons beyond what we think is possible. So therefore for me, the initiative that we have taken with our organization is to go beyond the best of the green economy, and we call it the blue economy. Because in the green economy, we must pay more for what is good for us. We must tax more to have renewable energy available. Not anymore. We have to move from paying more for what is good for your health and good for the environment, to a system whereby whatever we need in society is cheap and whatever is indispensable for life is for free. That's the cause. And if we, on the basis of several of the projects that we have implemented, we can do it, we must do it. We can't only think about it. Time has come to do about it. We have about 50 projects at the moment around the world. And I'm very impatient to do many more with many more people. Thank you.